Okay. Alright, I'm sorry that I had to cancel last time. There was just a problem uh, with the settings. I wanted to put on a very, very low latency in terms of how quickly the stream is being updated so that I could answer questions as quickly as possible. Um, so I am doing this as a way to tutor, m mainly as a way to tutor two kids at once who asked me to tutor them for physics. Um, so whenever you guys get on here, just write something in the chat so I know you guys are here, uh, Ezra and Daniel, and maybe someone else from my class might join us too. Uh, I'm going to be, in this video, I'm studying my physics, I'm studying for my physics midterm. We're going to be going through a review sheet that my teacher put online. I'll be going through exactly how to solve each question, how to do it. All right, so Max is here, Luber's here, awesome. We're just waiting on Go. Uh, uh, Max, you, you planning on staying around for the whole thing? Uh, or no? You planning on leaving? I don't know. Uh, also, guys, I can't hear the stream, so if there's any problems, please let me know so that I could fix them uh, in terms of the audio. Uh, Max is, okay, awesome. Uh, Jacob, you also planning on staying here for the whole thing? I, I have no idea. So we're still waiting on Goatman, uh, Go Daniel, whatever. Um, and while we do that, let me see if I can't text him. Oh, Gope's here. Awesome. Cool. All right. So that's everyone that we were waiting for, like officially being Ezra and Daniel. Uh, after that, after that, there's not really here. Okay. So let me set the stream up on my iPad so I could see the chat a little bit better so that I could answer your question. I got my iPad here so that I can answer everything. Beautiful. YouTube loves me. Awesome. I love Google and the company that they make this stuff so easy. YouTube and everything. All I had to do was copy and paste a stream key which is right here, which you guys can't see, in order to uh, do it. Now, it says that the video resolution is not very good. If there's a problem with that, tell me. Um, like, if there's a serious problem with that, like, you guys can't see what's happening, tell me. Uh, but I do want to stream like this very, very quickly so that there's no latency in terms of the upload, so that, like, you know, the conversations could flow very easily. Okay, let's go to Roof first. Okay, I just left Google to go back to Google. Uh, let's go to his situation that he told us. So, Ugh, I hate typing while I'm live. I get so nervous. Uh, you can't hear anything. Wait. someone. Can okay, well, everyone else in the chat is able to hear everything. So that must be a problem with your situation. Wait, let me just see if I can hear stuff on my iPad. Yeah, I can hear stuff on my iPad, so there's no problem. Wait, is that? Yeah, that's, that's Blumenfeld. Okay, I did not realize it just was a really long random name. All right, so yeah, so Feld, you, you seem to have uh, the only one with the problem. It was from a junk account. Okay, cool. So let me log into my thing. Classes, physics, assignments, midterm. Uh, all right, how should we do this? Should, let, should we just start with the top one? Or should we go like part of last year's, other part of last year's? Uh, maybe at some point I'll go through the equation sheet and tell you guys exactly how to do like everything on, on the equation sheet. But how do you guys want to do this? Midterm review sheet first, part of last year's midterm first, other part of the year's midterm first? Uh, Feld, it's a problem with you. All right, so Alter was the first one. I guess we're going with the midterm review sheet. Where did it go? Oh, it's down here, awesome. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So with that, I could get rid of you. I need this. I also need Microsoft Paint. Awesome. I still need this. This is a Word document. Interesting. All right. The midterm will cover everything we have. Blah 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 blah. Kinematic equations, concepts, and graphs. Be able to use kin. Wait. Are there even questions here? No. No. Yeah. There are no questions here. It's just. Like, what we need to know. Yeah, we're not doing this one. Um, like, there's nothing here. that Like, there are no questions that I could solve. You just, like, we just need to know all this. Okay, forget it. Google. We're doing the next one. No, I left the thing. <laughs> Life is so hard. I was talking about how I love Google. I hate Google. I hate my own stupidity. All right, midterm update. Part of last year's midterm. We're starting with this guy. Awesome. All right, this is even better because this one's on Google. All right, how much, work, how much work is required to lift a two kilogram mass to a height of 10 meters? Okay, so here, it's two kilograms 
and I'm sorry that my handwriting is terrible. I'm doing this on with a mouse. So two kilogram mass, uh, 10 meters. Oh, and work equals force time distance or displacement. We'll do an S because that's actually displacement. All right, so that's what work equals. So it's two kilograms, uh, 10 meters, and very good. So we know what the displacement is, it's 10 meters, but we don't know what the force is, so we'll have to figure that out. So we have the mass, and we know that F uh, equals ma. Well, we have the mass, and since we're lifting it, we know what acceleration we have to have, or in other words, we know what kind of acceleration we need. Everyone wants to skip to the next one. Should I skip to the next one? Fine, yeah, okay, I'm gonna skip to the next one because everyone seems to know this one. Fine. Uh... No, okay, what the hell? Oh, next one is in the terms of the next page. Okay, two kilograms. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Oh God, you people are crazy. Uh, I thought you meant the next question. Uh, so force, so the force that we're going to need to do this is going to equal the mass that we have, which is two times the acceleration. So how are we going to figure out the acceleration? Well, we know what kind of acceleration we need to beat because we're lifting it up. Um, so, so if the acceleration we're trying to beat is negative 10 because gravity, so the acceleration we need to have is going to be 10 or like, uh, like 10.1 because we need to beat it. But let's just say 10. We're going to approximate. So two times 10. So the force we're going to need is going to be 20. So the amount of work it's going to require is going to be 20 times displacement, which is 10. So that's 200. So work is going to uh, be 200 joules. I pray to God that's one of the answers. A, it's D. Okay, that's what the answer is, D. So everyone understand how we got that, or should I go through it again? What are we covering right now? Right now we are doing the first question. How much work is required to lift a 2 kilogram mass to a height of 10 meters? Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to go back to the previous question every time a new guy gets here because that makes no sense. Is there an eraser here? I mean, I guess I could just do... Yeah, there is an eraser here. Microsoft Paint is not a very good system. Like, I don't like it. Oy vey! I'm really going to have to do that? No, we're not. Do we're doing Control z We're going to Control z the whole business. Is there, like, a way that I could just erase the whole board? I guess I could use the dump bucket and just dump uh, white onto the board. All right, uh, next question. Base your answers to the following questions on the information in the diagram below. Okay, so we've got a uh, one times 10 to the third kilogram car. What does that mean? That means size, go back down. So one times 10 to the third is just one times 10 three times. What the hell is happening? Why can't I draw? I'm on black. Oh, I'm on the eraser. Um, Jesus. All right, so one times 10 to the third is just Okay, I hate my life. It... There we go. Okay. All right, so 1 times 10 will be that, and then times the 10 again, and then that, and then 1, that. Very good. So we got a 1,000 kilogram. That's the same thing as saying 1 times 10 and 3. So we got a 1 kilogram car uh, that is going in a circle, it seems. Yeah, clock rides around a flat circular track of a radius of 25. So... Uh, R equals 25 meters. That's very important. Um, the speed of the car is a consistent... Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to print this out so that I don't have to keep on doing this. Print, copies, color will be black and white. Uh, five sheets of paper. Is there a double-sided option, please? No, okay, print. All right, so while that's printing, let's do the second problem, and then I'll go and get it. What the hell just happened? What is happening? Why are things happening like this? What What is God doing to me? Please stop. Oy vey. Yeah, this is, this is not good. Okay. Stop it! Thank you. The car is at a consistent 5 meters per second. Awesome. So which factor, when doubled, will produce the greatest change in the centrifugal force acting upon the car? Okay, so it's going... 
So actually, the numbers don't actually matter. So velocity equals 5 meters per second. Okay. So it's asking, out of all of these numbers that we have, if I double one of them, what will produce the greatest change in the centrifugal force? Okay, well, we need to know what centrifugal force is. So FC, centrifugal force, equals uh, mass times velocity squared over radius. Awesome. Okay, so here's the thing. If we multiply the mass or the radius by 2, they will produce a change, but the change will be uh, like the same thing, right? It'll, it, not the change. The How much it's changing will be the same thing. What I mean by that is if we multiply the velocity by 2, since the velocity is being squared, it's actually exponential. What does exponential mean? Here, this is our x and y grid. Exponential means, so linear means like this. That's linear. In other words, when you add one to one thing, it goes up by the other. You add another to the other thing, it goes up by another. Very good. So if we multiply the mass by two, or we multiply the radius by two, the change that it will make on this centrifugal force is linear. But with velocity, since it's squared, it's actually exponential. In other words, it looks like that. Um, and that's actually not even right, because as you can see, it's lower down here. But what I mean by is you can see that it starts going crazy. like the effect of it starts really, really going crazy. And because of that, when we multiply the velocity by two, that will produce the greatest change. I don't know if I explained that very well. I hope you all got it. If there are any questions, please tell me. Uh, write in the chat. I'm gonna go get the other piece of paper. Post this video on your channel as well. Yeah, the video is gonna automatically save on the channel. Um, good, good, got it. What's what? What was the answer? Oh, the answer was velocity. Uh, oh wait, what was the actual letter? So go got that. Okay, very good. I actually hate my life. There was a freaking paper outage in the printer, and it didn't actually print. So we're gonna print it again, and hopefully this time it will work. Oh God, hates me. Clearly, black and white. Blah blah blah. Awesome. Print. Oh. Okay. Awesome. I think I hear the printer printing. Okay, cool. So let, next question while that's printing. Number three. A net force of... Oh, wait. We need to erase everything here. Ah, if I just hold down Z... Oh, that actually works. If I just hold down Z, it, it does it for me. That's super cool. All right. Big fan. Big fan. Okay. Wait. Cool. Okay. Um, Google. Awesome. So a net force of five newtons move a t moves a two kilogram object a distance of three meters in three seconds. How much work was done on the object? Okay. We don't actually care about the three, se th uh, three seconds. It doesn't matter how much time it takes. Because again, work equals force or net force really times displacement as this question so clearly stated that a net force uh, acted upon it. So five newtons moves. So we have five newtons of force. 3 meters. Okay, so it's just 15. So work equals 15. The answer is C. Everyone got that? Moving on. Um, if the speed of a moving object is doubled, which uh, quantity associated with the object must also double? Okay, so this one is not really thinking about it and going through step by step. Step, this is process of elimination. So momentum, kinetic energy, acceleration, gr uh, gravitational potential energy. Okay, so velocity is being doubled. V, uh, it becomes 2V. Velocity is being doubled. Awesome. Uh, and we've, so the options that we have are momentum, 
Uh, kinetic energy. Uh, can you upload this video on YouTube? The video will automatically upload to YouTube, Yellen. Jesus. Sorry, I'm triggered because, like, the printer is giving me problems and everything. All right. Uh, kinetic energy, acceleration, or potential energy. Okay, so acceleration or potential energy. All right, so in order to figure this out, like I said, we need process of elimination. So momentum equals mass times velocity. And honestly, most of you should have been able to figure this out already, but for those of you who did not, we're going to go through it uh, step by step. Kinetic energy equals... Um, half of mass times velocity, I think, right, 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 uh, number three was, uh, number three was 15, why, because five newtons of force is moving at three meters, five times three is 15, because uh, work equals force times mass, yeah, okay, everyone just jumped to it, yeah, half of the, half of the mass times velocity squared, thanks, thanks, Walter, half mass times velocity, Squared. Cool. All right. And acceleration equals delta velocity over time. And potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. Awesome. Okay. So let's go through each of these one by one. In fact, I'm going to go through them in terms of what they're not. So let's start at the end. So mass times gravity times height. That has nothing to do with velocity. So that's not it. Uh, delta velocity is the same as uh, V initial minus v final so if the initial one say it starts at a velocity of one meter per second it goes to two so the so over time and let's say that happens over one second so it starts at velocity one meter per second and it changes to two because the velocity is doubling so one minus two is negative one negative one over one okay let Okay, fine, let's do it this way. Negative 1 over 1 is negative 1, as opposed to uh, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 over 1 is 0. So 1 is not, so 0 times 2 is not 1. So that's why that's not the thing. I hope you all got that. If you didn't, rewind the tape, watch it again. So it's not acceleration. Kinetic energy. Okay, this is very similar to the thing that we were dealing with before. Remember, x and y grid, linear versus exponential. So if velocity is doubled, since we're squaring the velocity over here, if it's doubled, it will not. It will do more than double the kinetic energy. It will do a lot more than double the kinetic energy, so it's not kinetic energy. The only thing that it will actually be doubled is momentum. Uh, and I'll demonstrate that for you. So say the mass is 1. In other words, we don't have to worry about the mass. And the velocity, let's say, let's say it's starting at a velocity of 3. So it turns into a velocity of, of 6. Boom, it's being doubled. Um... Say it starts at a velocity of 4, it turns into a velocity of 8. Boom, it's being doubled because the mass is 1. Let's make the mass 2 just to think about it like to show you that the mass really doesn't matter. Uh, so say it starts with a velocity of 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. And uh, and if we double velocity, that would be 2 times 12. Wait, shoot. No, 2 times 3 is 6. And if we double it, that would be 2 times 6 is 12. And that is the reason why uh, momentum is the correct answer. Everyone got that? Uh, so what is the reason it can't be? Because I literally, I, I showed why that's not true. So imagine the initial velocity is 2. And the final velocity would there, therefore be 4. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2 over 1. Awesome. Uh, now let's double, wait, negative. How should I explain this? Okay, how about this? What does acceleration mean? Acceleration means the change in velocity. So imagine we've got something that's not moving, but it's accelerating at a rate of one meter per second squared. So at time zero, it would be not moving. Time one, it would be moving one. Time two, it would be moving two, right? Between time one and time two, what happened to the velocity? It doubled, but the acceleration stayed the same, right? That's, that's, that's a good way of explaining it, okay? Everyone understand that? Awesome, so the, reason, so the answer is momentum. Okay, where's everything going? Why why are things not disappearing? No, did this take too long? Okay, we're gonna use the 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 bucket. What the hell? Okay, what if what if what if I bucket like that? No, nope, still black. Okay, that's weird. Uh, what if what if I choose the white? Guys, how do I erase a whole thing in Microsoft Paint?
And you're right. It, well, okay, I'm just going to use a white square. Is that not working also? What the hell? Guys, someone needs to help me. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Help me. Oh, Phil. Wait. No, shoot. Never mind. That didn't work. Okay. Uh, Wait, maybe it won't. Nope, still don't work. Okay. Someone needs to help me. How do I erase a whole thing in Microsoft Paint? Command A. Mm, nope, that's not. Nope, that's. No, nope, that's. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, this might actually. Okay, I'm just going to slide it off. And I think it's still there somewhere, but we're going to forget about it, okay? Awesome. I'm going to go get the piece of paper. Don't judge me, something still went wrong. Um, no, I don't want you. I want to print the effing... Did I click download or did I click print? I want to print all the pages. And this time we're not moving on to the next question. This time I'm going downstairs to check if it's printing. Uh... Print. Please print. Why does it open up this? Why is it opening up this? Of all the things. All right, I'm going to go check. Okay, something's wrong with the printer, but I remembered something. We actually were handed it out in class, so I'm going to just use that. Uh, hey, Bob Johnson, I'm doing good. How you been? <laughs> yeah, you guys are hilarious. Where is it? Do I not have it? All right, you know what, screw this. We're gonna stay on Google, okay. Uh, in the diagram shown, a 10 kilogram ball is fired with a velocity of 500 meters per second from a 100. Wait, could I split the screen? Could I split the screen so that I have one side Microsoft Paint and the other side this? How, does anyone know how to do that? Um, uh, okay, bye, Bob. But Bob. Um, sorry to hear that. Uh, how do you split the screen? We're going to go to Google. How to split screen windows. Do not judge my typing if I made a typing error. I'm bad at typing. So uh, open the five window open five windows and no applications. Place your mouse on an empty area at the top of any window. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the window to the left side of the screen toward the center. Of that side. Let go of the mouse. Okay, so we're gonna do that, and we're gonna eh, up. Oh! Did that work? No, that didn't work. Uh, Google. Roz, is it working now? Oh, I hate my life. Step one. Okay. Oh, if place your mouse. Okay, place your mouse on an empty area at the top of any open window. Is this considered an open area? 
No. At the top, hold down the left mouse button and drag the window to the left side of the screen toward the center of that side. Toward the center of that side. What does that mean? What the hell does that mean? If I go like that. Ah, uh, did that work? Hey, that worked! Hey! Look at that! That's crazy! <laughs> it actually worked. Alright, awesome. So, we're gonna tone you down a little bit. And now, awesome. More question. Okay, here we go. The diagram show. Okay. So it shows a 10 kilogram ball is fired with a velocity of 500 meters per second from a 1,000 kilogram cannon. What recoil velocity of the cannon? Okay, awesome. So we've got this. Is, where's my where's my brush? Brush. Thank you. So we've got our cannon. This is this square is going to be our cannon. We've got our ball. The ball is going out of the cannon 500 meters per second, right? Do I have to write this because we could still see it on the side? Uh, it's just a square. Don't judge my cannon. Oh my god. Uh, 10 kilograms. Okay, very good. So velocity equal. I'm just copying the slide that you guys could still see at this point. And 1,000 kilograms. Okay, so there's a very simple rule. It's Newton's third law. Every action has an equal but opposite reaction. In other words, the velocity of this cannon will be... Uh, equal to the opposite of this thing's velocity, but not actually velocity, momentum. The momentum of the cannon will equal the momentum of the ball, because the cannon shot out the ball, meaning the ball pushed the cannon. What does this mean? This means 1,000 times our V, that we're trying to figure out, 1,000 times V, equals uh, 5,000. And then if we divide, that's, that's not a zero, if we divide 1,000 on both sides, we will end up with V equals 5 meters per second. So the answer is A. Everyone got that? Awesome. Moving on. Ooh, I need to do Control-Z before everything gets too late. Wait. Control-Z. Ah, no, no, no. No, no, not this again. I'm being cursed by, by, by recurring things. Bye. Leave me alone. Uh, Salman, you keep on uh, sending like things that YouTube doesn't like. So, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, man. All right. A ball is thrown horizontally at a speed of 20 meters per second from the top of a cliff. How long does it take the ball to fall 19.6 uh, nine, meters to the ground? So we don't actually care about the horizontal velocity. We only care about the fact that it's falling 19.6 meters to the ground. Okay. And we, we need to find a time. Okay. And since it's falling, we know the acceleration because we know what gravity is. It's 9.8. In this problem, I'm using 9.8, not 10, because it says 19.6, which clearly means it's asking 9.8. Because decimals, very good, awesome. So, I need an equation that, e that, that involves acceleration, because I know the acceleration, distance, because I know the distance, and time, because I'm trying to figure out the time. Well, I have an equation that very much, very, very much like that. Uh, what is it? It is distance equals half of the acceleration times time squared. So 19.6 equals half of 9.8, which is, do I have a calculator on Windows? Tell me I have a calculator. Um, why is it 5,000 though? Oh, why is what 5,000? Why is the velocity of the ball 5,000? Uh, because 500 times 10 is 5,000. The momentum of the ball is 5,000. 500 times 10. Like mass times velocity, right? Awesome. Moving on. Sorry it takes me so long. Um, yeah, Gop, you got it. Actually, the stream delay is not that low, actually. It's pretty pretty quick, so that's pretty good. Um, all, right, but, all right, calculator. I need a calculator. Uh, a, B, C, C. Awesome. Calculator. Cool. Could I, could I put you somewhere? Yes, I can, but I'd actually rather if you were higher up, and you need to be much smaller. Wait, can I do this? Tell me there's a way to do this, please. Boom. No, where'd the calculator go? All right, fine, we're just going to do this. Okay, so 9.8 uh, divided by 2 equals 4.9. So 4.9 t squared awesome so 19.6 so now we need to do uh 19.6 divided by 4.9 divided by 4.9 so 4 equals time squared and the amount of time equals 2 t 
equals two. So the answer is uh, B. Everyone got that? Cool. Awesome. So good. I got to be careful because I don't want to re- Okay, awesome. Seven. The diagram here shows a ball thrown toward the toward the east and at an and at and upward at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. Point X, point X represents the ball's highest point. What is the direction of the ball's velocity at point X? Okay, let's think about this. We've got a parabola here, as you can see, right? Parabolas mean that the slope uh, at this point, like how quickly it's going down, is the opposite of the slope at this point, how quickly it's going up, right? So if this is like 5, then this is negative 5. Um, which means that at some point they, they transfer, and that point is here. This is where the vertical velocity is zero, right? It's not moving up anymore at this point. It's right in the middle. Uh, so if the vertical velocity is zero, in other words, it's not moving up, and it's moving to the east, then maybe like use a bit of your brain and figure out what the velocity is. I'll give you one hint. It's east, because it's not moving up. It's moving to the east. It means it's to the east. The answer is B. Awesome. That is a very easy question. The graph shown represents the relationship between velocity and time for a 2 kilogram chart that is initially at rest and starts moving northward. Okay, so here's our car. So, okay, well, actually, here's our car. The car starts moving to the north, so it starts moving up. And then, so it keeps on, it keeps on quickly moving up, like it's, it's moving up faster and faster and faster. And then it starts to slow down, and then it starts to go backwards. Okay, very good. So this is what I'm going to show to show our train of thought. Boom. That is right here. That second thing is right there. Okay. And then it starts to slow down again, right? And then it starts to move backwards for a time, right? And then it, it, it's, it's stalling. Okay. So then it starts to move quickly backwards. It starts to go very quickly backwards. And it stays there for a couple of seconds. So uh, let's just do that again, right? Cool. Same thing. Awesome. It stays there for a couple seconds and then it speeds up. So it doesn't speed up, but it starts slowing down in the backwards direction. It starts slowing down in the backwards direction until it just stops moving altogether, right? So it's it's moving upwards. It's it quickly moves upwards until it gets to this point, and then it starts slowing down and it starts moving backwards, right? Because it's going down. Uh, then it starts speeding up on the backwards thing, and then it stays there for a little bit. Slows down. Okay, very good. Awesome. Um, so what is the question? In which direction is the car, car, cart that is shown traveling at time four? So that's time four. And boom. All right. So here's the thing. If this was showing, so even though it's slowing down, it's still moving forward, right? As you can see over here, this is, this is what it's talking about. I think that this is time four. So even though it's slowing down, it's still moving northward, right? Right? Right. So if this was a position relative to time graph, if this, if this graph was a position relative to time, then it's actually moving backwards now, right? Because it's moving, it's, it's moving back down, right? But since it's velocity, it's still moving northwards, but at a slower rate than it was at this point. So the answer is A, north. Everyone got that? Awesome. Okay, there has not been a question in the chat for a while, which means one of two things. Everyone's gone or people are getting it. So that's, I guess that's good. All right. A car accelerates uni uniformly from rest to a speed of 10 meters per second in two seconds. Uh, from rest to a speed of... To, what is the acceleration of the car? Okay, so what is acceleration? Acceleration is delta velocity over time. So the change in... So the velocity in the beginning... Actually, let's do... Right, someone mentioned V final minus V initial. That's okay. Let's do that. So the, the V final is 10 meters per second. 10 minus V initial, which is zero. So it's just 10 over that happens in the course of two seconds right two so it's 10 over two can someone please tell me what 10 over two is 10 over two is five five meters per second squared and like there might be an option on the test that says five meters per second you have to choose five meters per second squared that is what velocity is you don't get that what don't you get you don't get what the the question before or this question right now question nine or question eight Oh, also, you, you probably want to move the, the, the time thing to the tippy tippy top because it seems like there's a delay on your thing. Question eight. Okay. All right. So at time four, 
what is the velocity? The velocity is 10 meters per second, right? 10 meters per second. So if the velocity is 10 meters per second in the northward direction, what direction is it going? North. Like, for example, at time uh, 6, the velocity is negative 10 meters per second. In other words, it's going south, right? That, that, that's, that's as simple as I can put it. The way I put it before was much more complicated to like really have a good vi uh, visualization, but that's the, that, that's the gist of it. Uh, do you understand now? What formula did you use for 9? Oh, the, so acceleration equals delta velocity over time. All right, so Gope understands Yellen, the formula with delta velocity over time, V final minus V initial over time, two seconds. Time, uh, so the acceleration is five, point, uh, 5 meters per second squared. All right, it seems like people are still here. That's awesome. All right, 10. An object falls freely, freely from rest for three seconds. The acceleration of the object is, okay, so this is just asking you what is the acceleration of gravity. You all should know that. Ah, so here's an example. Is it 10 meters per second or is it 10 meters per second squared? Acceleration is always meters per second squared. So the answer is B. Everyone got that? Moving on. Uh, which velocity? Okay, you know, honestly, by the way, I think it's a good idea I didn't print it out because now I could actually use my mouse and like show stuff, whereas before I could not do that, like if I printed it out onto a paper. So, like, you know, God's with me. Uh, and with you, of course. With us, with all of us. God is with. Okay, moving on. The velocity, the, which velocity time graphs? Time graph represents the motion of an object moving with a consistent acceleration. Okay, what is acceleration? Acce acceleration is change in velocity. In other words, it's the slope of this thing. So as you can see in this one, the slope is changing. It's not always the same. So it's not C. The slope is the same in the, uh, is not the same in this one also. So it's not D. Now the answer on the answer key is A because the slope is something. It's like one. But B would also be a good answer, and he said that he won't put a question exactly like this on the test with A and B as choices, because the slope is the same throughout the whole thing on B also. It's just zero. But it wants A because there is an acceleration, so that's why A is correct. So that's why A is the answer. Okay, everyone understand that? Moving on. 12. A student with a weight of 500 newtons sits on a chair. The chair exerts a force on the student of... Okay, so... This should be very simple, but for those of us that don't really know this, let's, let's, let's draw a diagram. So here we have our chair, and here we have our student. Okay, our student is standing on the chair. I know the thing says it's sitting, but like sitting involves drawing foreshortening, and I don't know how to do that. I'm sure Gedalia might, because I think that he's good at drawing, but I don't remember. Uh, anyway, he weighs 500 newtons, so he is pushing down 500 newtons. Now, the chair is obviously pushing back at him. Why? Because if he's pushing on the chair with 500 newtons, then every action has an equal and opposite reaction. In other words, it's going to be the same amount, but opposite. So it'll be negative 500. So the chair will be pushing up. Chair is pushing up with negative 500. Actually, let's think about this differently. He's pushing down on the chair, so it's negative 500 newtons. And the chair is pushing up at him, so it's 500, right? So the answer is C. And as you can see, they also did the whole negative positive thing that I did. So the answer is C. Everyone understand? Awesome. Moving on. Uh, no. What is happening? Oh, there we go. Oh my god, I just saw a person disappear. All right, three. A test booklet? Booklet. A test booklet is sitting at rest on a desk. Compared to the force the booklet is on the desk, the force, on, the force of the desk on the booklet is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Equal. Equal. So it's the same. C. That's the answer. Awesome. Everyone understand? Great. Moving on. A force of 50 newtons causes an object to accelerate 10 meters per second squared. What is the mass of the object? So, okay. So we want an equation that relates forces... Uh, accelerations 10 meters per second squared so forces and accelerations to mass we have a great one Isaac Newton's second law of motion F equals m a in other words 50 equals m we don't know what m is we're trying to figure it out uh, times a which is 10 so we divide both sides by 10 mass is 5 the answer is 5 kilograms everyone understand that good awesome moving on control Z control Z control Z control Z Great. 
Uh, as the pendulum moves from the bottom of its swing to the top of the swing, the... Okay, so here, let's draw a pendulum. Is there a pendulum? Pendulums are like strings with balls at the end. Okay, I should not have said that to a bunch of teenagers. Um, actually, it's a sign that I'm a teenager that I... What the... Oh, wait, if I right-click, it erases? No, so then why did it just erase? Wait, if I left-click and right-click? Why did it just erase? Wait, okay. So, so weird. Okay, whatever. All right, so we got our pendulum. Awesome. Uh, as the pendulum moves from the bottom of the swing to the top, so it's swinging, so it's going like that, right? So now it's like this. Awesome. <laughs> um, wait, maybe delete? What do you mean maybe delete? I don't know. Whatever. All right, so the kinetic energy of the pendulum increases. No, because it's slowing down as it goes to the top. Right? right? Visualize it. Imagine a pendulum swinging. It's slowing down as it goes to the top, and kinetic energy is all about how much uh, movement is there. No, delete delete doesn't do it. I, I tried already. I'm not going to test it again right now because I don't want to delete everything. So it's not the kinetic energy increases. Kinetic energy of the pendulum remains the same. No, again, it go, it's, it's slowing down. So the kinetic energy is going down. Potential energy of the pendulum uh, decreases. So no, not that. Why? Because D, potential energy of the pendulum increases. Why is it increasing? Because potential energy is all about how high up you are. And as it moves up, it's going higher up. So the potential energy is moving up. Right? Very simple. Very straightforward. Awesome. Let's try out backspace again. What about right-click backspace? What about right-click control? What about right-click Z? Is there any shortcut that deletes the whole thing? Okay, why am I on my eraser now? That's weird. Wait, oh, eraser. So right-click is for an eraser. That's that's interesting. Okay, I did not know that. Anyway, I don't really care because control Z is working just fine. But honestly, I would like a way to just erase the whole thing. All right, the diagram shown represents a frictionless track. A 10 kilogram block starts from at rest at a point A and slides along the track. Awesome. What is the approximate potential energy of the block at time C? So time C, it's up here, meaning it's two meters off the ground and it weighs 10 kilograms. So what is potential energy? Uh, PE equals mass times gravity times the acceleration of gravity times height times h in other words uh the, poten the potential energy over here equals 10 because 10 kilograms times 10 because because uh, 10 10 meters per second squared is the acceleration of gravity times 2 because it's 2 meters off the ground 10 times 10 is 100 times 2 is 200 the answer is b uh be joules, like 200 joules. Joules, joules are energy. Energy is joules. Awesome, great. Everyone understand? Great, we're moving on. Uh, control Z, control Z, control Z. Control Z, control Z, control Z. There's got to be a better way to do this. No! Oh, guys, remember this? This this whole fiasco over here? Uh, yeah, control A, go away. Go away. Um, awesome. The force, A force, is applied to a block causing it to accelerate along a horizontal frictionless surface. The energy gained by the block is equal to work done on the block, power applied to the block, impulse applied to the block, or mo uh, momentum applied to the block. All right, here's a very simple rule you need to remember, and if you remember this rule, you'll get this question right. I think this is the rule. The amount of energy something has is equal to the amount of work done on it. Or the amount of kinetic energy something has is equal to the amount of work done on it. So the answer would be A. But I'm not actually sure if that rule is true. So let's go check the answer key. Uh, 17, the answer is A. Yeah, okay. Right? Hey, we're almost done. That's crazy. Uh, who's still here? Everyone, raise your hand if you're still here. All right. Uh, or shout it out. Uh, name all seven horcruxes in order that they were destroyed. Okay. Uh... Book, um, I'm a Harry Potter nerd, by the way. Book was the first one. Uh, Locket was the second one. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, sorry. Ring was the second one. Dumbledore killed that one. Um, Locket, Ring. No, not Locket. Book, Ring. What was the next one? Locket was destroyed by Harry and Ron with the sword of Gryffindor. Gryffindor. How many are left? Uh, diadem, s snake, 
tight end snake. What was the last one? The last one was something strange. Something that we wouldn't have expected. Tight end snake. Cup. And Harry. So, ah, so after, no, no, okay. So, here. So, book, ring, locket, uh, cup, diadem, cup, diadem, snake, and Harry. Right? Is that true? Yeah, and I, I need confirmation here. Again, it's book, uh, 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 ring, locket, cup, diadem. Yes, I got it. Awesome. The object, with, uh, an object with a mass of ten kilograms, is traveling with a velocity of ten meters per second squared. The kinetic energy of the object. Okay, so again, kinetic energy K E. Uh, brush. K E equals half of the mass times velocity squared. So the mass is 10, the velocity is 10, so t uh, 10 times 10 squared, which is 100, so 10 times 10. Uh, so 5 times 100, yeah, 10 times 10 is 100, 5 times 100 is 500. So K equals 500 joules. The answer is C. Everyone got that? Awesome. Great. We are done this review sheet. So uh, everyone want to go on to the next one or no? Where'd it go? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I don't want it to be a download thing. Shoot. Oh, wow. There are comics here. Okay. Should we read the comics or should we not? So we don't need this now, I guess. Okay. Oh, no. Part one. Are there going to be parts on the midterm? Crap. All right, so we did very well, so let's read some comics now, I guess. So there's a stick figure. Uh, what happened? So something fell, I guess. No, he fell. Where am I? Help someone help. Foosh. I have no idea what's happening to this in this comic. Oh, 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 so he's running. He hit something, and he's, he's trying to run into it again. He keeps on running. He's like a fly that's trapped in a window. And so the punchline is, huh. Looks, I can't read this. Forget it. We're not going to read this one. We're going to read the next comment. Okay, I can't read any of them. The words are too small. Recall. What are we recalling? 520 feet for every mile. Oh, shoot. No, no, no. Tell me I can still control Z. Thank God I can still control Z. I think that there's like a time limit. No, there must not be a time limit. I don't know. So can I erase this? No, I can't erase it. Is there a way that I can like actually get rid of this, please? Oh my god. Come on. Is there like a delete box somewhere like Snapchat has that I could drag this to? Forget it. Just go off to the side like the abomination you are. Alright, Joe Too Cool is driving his car 65 miles per hour down the street. So he's going sit brush. Brush. 65 miles per hour. Awesome. Um he hears his phone ring, looks down for one second to read the text. He just received. How many feet does Joe travel in three quarters of that second? Okay, so we're trying to find... So the amount of time is three quarters of a second. Three quarters second. And he looks down. He's traveling 65 miles per hour. The amount of time it takes is... Yeah, three, three quarters of a second. Awesome. So how are we going to do this? And it wants to find out how many feet... He traveled. All right, so the first thing I think we should figure out is how many feet per hour he's going. And in order to do that, we're going to need to do some conversions. I'm very... Oh, my God, is that thing in this... Ugh, 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 what the hell? This is absolutely insane. Okay, uh, I need an eraser. Just, just go away. Just, just, just leave me the hell alone. Oh, my God. Okay, control A. I'm going to make everything much smaller. I'm going to take you. I'm going to drag you to the top. Awesome. And that's just going to stay here because ugh, it somehow got there. Great. All right. So six, So we're going to have to convert it to feet per feet per hour because I want to do that. So in order to do that, we're going to need to do some conversions. I hope you all know how to do conversions. If you don't, this will be a refresher. So 65 miles, miles 
for every one hour, right? So in order to do this, we're going to have to times it by, uh, right, one hour, one hour, uh, times 3,000, what, what's 60 times 60? I have a calculator somewhere, right? I should be able to know this by heart, but I don't. 60 times 60 is 3,600. So in every one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. No, but I don't want to convert it to seconds. I want to convert it to feet per hour. So actually, this I made a mistake. Uh, so one mile, because if, if we want to cancel out something that's on the top, we have to put it on the bottom. The miles will cancel out over, uh, not over, under uh, 5,280 feet, right? 5,280 feet. Okay, cool. Uh, so 65 times 5,280. Uh, clear is 65 times 5,280. Equals uh, 3, 4, 3. Three, two hundred feet. So he's going that amount of feet every hour. Uh, which is another way of second. Which is another way of saying that he's going that amount of feet for every three thousand six hundred seconds. Because remember, again, in one hour there's three thousand six hundred seconds. So it's another way of saying he's going that amount of feet in every three. So how many? Uh, feet per second is that well let's just act we could literally just do this and that will get it this is a neat idea for a stream alicia certainly plus the studio awesome thank, uh, thank you so much for the compliment uh stick around maybe you'll learn some physics okay uh three four three two zero zero divided by three six zero 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 equals so it's nine point five so it's going nine point five uh, feet every second, right? And he looks down at his phone for three quarters of a second, right? So how many feet is that? Well, we do, we'll do 9.5 times 3 over 4. So clear. Uh, can I get some parentheses here, please? No, that's not going to give me parentheses. Yeah, okay. I'm calling that common was... I'm calling that comment no that's not zaman that's that's just uh that, that's just a subscriber of mine who's been on the, who's been a subscriber to the channel for a while even though it's sort of dead at this point but i still stream from time to time all right anyway uh 9.5 okay wait clear let's do three over four first three divided by four uh times 9.5 right because it's going 9.5 feet per second and the time is three over four seconds and distance equals velocity, which is this number, times time, which is this number. So the distance is 7.1 feet. Is that the answer? No, that's definitely not the answer. Three quarters of a second. That amount of feet. Did I do something wrong? Wait, let's go back. 65 miles per hour is the same as that amount Yeah, yeah, okay, wait, hold on, let's go back a little bit. Three, four, three, two, zero, zero. Right? That makes sense. Hold on. Sixty-five times five to eighty. That number, awesome. Divided by Oh! Oh! Yeah, I did, I did do something wrong. See? Uh yeah, I added an extra zero here. Yeah, that shouldn't be there. Uh, so it's 3,600. All right, so this number divided by uh, 3,600 is 95. Okay, so 95 times 3 divided by 4 is 71.5. So the closest answer to that is 75 feet, uh, and that's the answer, I, I believe. Th this is the answer. Yay, we got the answer. So everyone understand how we did that? I know that it was a little bit crazy because of all the conversions, but hopefully it makes sense. If it doesn't, I could do it again. Uh, it really won't take too long. What's happening? 
No! No! Please, no. No, 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 no. Okay, seriously, there's gotta be a way to delete everything on Microsoft Word with one click. Uh, Microsoft. How to uh, erase board on paint. Uh, okay. Specifically, Microsoft Paint. How do you delete Microsoft? Select the eraser tool from the toolbox on the left hand side. Click on the primary color box and select the color you'd like to erase. Then click on the secondary color box and choose the color you'd like to place the primary. What? That's not what I want. Here, fresh paint clear all work. Mm -mm 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 How do I delete a painting? Okay, so here. Uh Windows uses what's called a I don't care why it works. In Fresh Paint, click the back button to go to your gallery. Then click my paintings. What the hell? Is there like seriously not a way to do this? I'm gonna kill someone. Um, select all, we're selecting all of it. Now if I delete all of it. Why, why, that should definitely work. Do you just have to make a new one? What do you mean make a new one? Do I have to like make a new thing? I don't want to make a new thing every single time. I have to do a new question. I no painting all white will take too much time. All right, whatever. So I just made a new thing, I guess. All right, cool. Moving on. How many people are still here? Eight. Wow, people are still watching this. All right, assuming air resistance can be neg 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 negligent there we go why is there a c there approximately what was the stone's accelerations stone's acceleration speed and position at the instance before it hit the water okay so it's falling i guess yeah it's falling it falls for 16 seconds great so the acceleration is always the same it's gravity the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared uh here 9.8 meters per second squared so it's either a b or c Right? So now we have to figure out what the velocity was? Speed. Yeah, we have to figure out the speed. Okay, so it's been falling for 16 seconds, and the... What just happened? It's been falling for 16 seconds, and it's been accelerating at a rate of 9 meters per second squared. So 16... Nope, nope, I want my brush. 16... Why is it so small? I mean big. 16... Doot, doot. Me closer. 16 uh, seconds and uh, so velocity equals acceleration times time right so the time has been 16 and the acceleration was about 10 so 10 times 16 is about 1 6 so yeah so equals 1 6 that meters per second okay so let's find one that has that Been following for, wait, do none of them have that? 9.8 meters per second squared. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Awesome. Uh, three, yeah, this one. All right, so this one is the only one that has the acceleration and the speed that we want. So we know that it's B. Uh, but but there are two other options that if you did not get uh, the, the, uh, the, if you did not, if it did not give you, or if it did not want the speed, you would have to figure out how far it's traveled. And I'll, I'll tell you how far it traveled in a second. Where did you get 16 from? Oh, right. This guy's counting. 13, 14, 15, 16. And then you hear the splash. So it's been falling for 16 seconds. All right. So how do we figure out the distance it's been traveling? Well, distance equals average velocity times time. Right? So, let's think about this. The, the velocity in the beginning, 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 was zero. It was not falling. The velocity at the end was 160. So, you just take 160 and add it to zero, like, and add zero to it and divide by two, because that's how you figure out the averages of stuff. You take all of them and divide it by how many there are. So, 1600 plus zero over two. So, it's just 1600 divided by two. So, what is that? Clear. Uh, one six 
100 divided by 2 equals 80. So it's been uh, so the average velocity is 80 meters per second. Times time, which we've already discussed, is 16. So times 16 uh, equals 1,280. So it's traveled 1,280 meters, and again, it's B. The answer is B. Super cool, guys. Awesome. We figured out that one. Great. Uh, question three. You throw a pumpkin straight up in the air. It rises to the top of its trajectory and then begins to fall. A moment before it hits the ground, it has... You're right, it does have a downward velocity. Downward velocity, zero... So it, it, it does not have an upward acceleration. Because if it did, then it would be slowing down as like it, fa it fell. It would like be falling, but falling slower as it did a second before. It's actually falling faster than it did a second before, so it does not have an upward acceleration. It does not have zero acceleration, because gravity is a downward acceleration. Downward velocity, downward acceleration. That is the answer. It's definitely not an upward velocity, right? A second before it hits the ground, it is not going up. That makes no sense. All right, anyway, the answer is C. The slope of a straight velocity with respect to time graph is... Okay, so here. Imagine we've got... Okay, this is time, and this is velocity. So remember when I was talking to you on the, on the review sheet before, I was talking to you about how the slope of this graph, whether it's like this or whether it's like this, or whether it's like this, the slope of that is how, how, how quickly the velocity is changing. In other words, it's, it's the acceleration of that velocity. So the answer is A, the acceleration. Do you understand that? So again, the slope of a, of a velocity time graph is acceleration. The slope of a position time graph, how quickly something is changing position, how quickly something is moving, is the velocity. Again, the slope of a position time graph is the velocity, the slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration, and the slope of the acceleration time graph is just how quickly the acceleration is changing. So I guess it's the force, how much force it has, right? How much force is on the object? That's that. Okay. Uh, here we go. Question five. If you drop a ball in a vacuum near the Earth's surface, which of the following remain uh, constant as the ball falls? Uh, if you drop a ball at a va in a vacuum near the Earth's surface... Okay, so that basically means there's no air resistance, right? Which of the following remains constant as the ball fo falls? The force on the ball, the ball's velocity, the, the ball's acceleration, and the ball's position. So the velocity def definitely does not remain constant, right? Because it's falling faster. Like, it's, it's, when, whenever something's falling, it's falling faster than it was a second ago, right? Like, think about it. Just imagine something falling. Um, the acceleration does remain the same because gravity is always the same, like, within a given time, unless, like, you blow up the planet or something. Uh, and the force on the ball is just equal to the acceleration times the ball's mass. So the ball's mass is staying the same, presumably. Uh, the acceleration is staying the same, which means that the force is staying the same. Uh, so the answer is just force and acceleration. The answer is C. Uh, A, B, C. The answer is D. Uh, C. A, B, C, D. The answer is D. Who is Jack Beinher? Oh, by the way, Bob, I'm so happy you did not uh, kill yourself. That, that makes me feel very happy. Um, uh, he's, he's just, he's, he's, a, he's a loved subscriber of the channel. That's the gist of it. All right. A man who weighs 800 newtons is standing on a scale, which gives weights in units of newtons in an elevator. Okay. So he weighs 800 and he's in an elevator. Awesome. If the elevator is traveling upwards at a constant speed of 30 meters per second, what will the scale read? All right. So here's the thing. If the elevator was accelerating upwards, then his weight would be equal to how much he weighs times how much it's accelerating upwards by. Okay, but if it's going at a constant speed, then the scale will just read 800 newtons. And like, think about it for a second. Imagine the earth, here's the sun, here's the earth. The earth is going around the sun, right? In other words, it's moving. Imagine we have a guy right here and the earth is moving like this and he's standing on a scale. So the earth is pushing him, but it's a constant speed. So the scale just reads, reads how much he weighs, right? If something is moving at a constant speed, and you're standing on a scale whilst whilst on it, it will literally only read how much you weigh. If it's accelerating downwards, then it then it will read how much you weigh divided by its acceleration. 
And if it's accelerating upwards, it will read how much you weigh times your acceleration. Um, I hope if any, if you don't understand that, please tell me, um, I hope that made sense. Great. Seven. If an object, if an object's free body diagram does not have any arrows on it, then the object currently, okay, so a free body diagram looks like this. We got a box and it shows all the forces on the object. Um, so imagine something is like flying on a, on a thing of ice. It's just going on the thing of ice. So ice doesn't have friction, uh, which is a force. It's, it's rolling on the thing of ice. Nothing's pushing it. Then the free body diagram will show this, just this even though it's moving, even though the velocity might equal 10 meters per second. But since there are no forces, we won't show them, except for gravity, except for gravity, right? And the normal force, because the normal force counteracts gravity, okay? So if, the, so if an object's free body diagram does not have any arrows on it, then the object currently must be at rest, must have a velocity that is decreased. So it does not necessarily have to be at rest. Again, uh, it's going on ice, uh, okay, actually, a better example would be it's going through space. It's a rocket ship. So here, like this is our rocket ship. Awesome. It's going through space, uh, meaning there's no gravity, there's no normal force, there's nothing. Why are people cursing on the thing? Um, actually, I don't. I think that YouTube is just paranoid uh, with stuff. Anyway, it's it's going through space. It's moving 10 meters per second. Nothing. Nothing is putting a force on it but it's moving so it would still the free body diagram of this rocket would still not have any arrows on it but it's still moving so a is not the answer it must have a velocity that's decreasing again not necessarily in order to have a velocity that's decreasing you must have an acceleration and in order to have an acceleration you must have a force so if there's no force on it then it's de then the velocity is remaining the same because if there's no force on it then there's no acceleration on it and if there's no acceleration on it then the velocity is staying the same must be following a parabolic trajectory. I don't know what a parabolic trajectory is, so it's definitely not that. Must be moving. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be moving. It just might be like sitting in space, doing nothing. Might be accelerating, but might not. Okay, no, it, it cannot be accelerating. If it is accelerating, then that means there is a force on it, which would appear on the free body diagram. Must be either at rest or moving with a constant speed in a constant direction, F. That's the answer. And one of the ways you could tell us the answer, it, in a test, if you're taking a test and you don't know which one's the right answer, and there's one of them that's like much more detailed than the other, just pick that one. I mean, you're, you're going to guess anyway, uh, and just guess that one. It, it, it's your best chance. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, so if it's an arc, then it definitely needs a force on it, because if it's an arc, then that means there's an acceleration, which means that there must be a force on it. Um, great, moving on. Question eight. A large 50 kilogram cube of uniform density. Okay, so it's just a 50 kilogram cube. I, I would have assumed it's of uniform density. Exhorts uh, 250 pascals of pressure as it rests on the floor. What is the area of the bottom of the cube? Okay, so... Pascals is a form of pressure, and 1 PA equals 1 kilogram over 1, oh no, I'm sorry, 1 Newton, 1 Newton over 1 meter squared. Now, meter squared is a term used for area. So that comes very handy because that, that's going to help us out a lot because it's asking us how, what is the area. So it's a 50 kilogram cube. In other words, it's uh, a 500 Newton cube. Do, 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 do. Uh, and it's of uniform density, so everything is the same. And it's sitting down on the floor. And the pascals, the amount of pressure, is 250. 250. Uh, so 250 equals 500 over x or over a well i don't want to write a because that's acceleration over x we're trying to figure out x and the x is area right so how are we going to do this well we could times both sides by x 
So we'll, we'll just do algebra. 250 x uh, equals uh, 500. Uh, divide both sides by 250. Divide both sides by 250. Zeros cancel. 50 divided by 25 is 2, I believe. So x equals 2 uh, meters squared, or 2 squared meters. All right, and that means that the answer is V. Everyone understand how we got that? Again, the equation is 1 Pascal equals 1 Newton over 1 meter over one square meter. Uh, that's a, an equation you definitely should remember. It will probably be on the equation sheet that he's going to give us for the midterm. So and that's that. Moving on. No. Okay. So that means since, yeah, there is a time limit on this thing. So we're just going to have to make a new thing. Don't say awesome. Um, which of the following statements is false? Okay. This should be pretty easy and I don't need the Microsoft Word for this. Okay. If you throw a ball up in the car, up in a car, it will generally land uh, in your hand unless you accelerate. That is true. That is true. Imagine you're traveling at a constant speed, which means the ball is also traveling at a constant speed. And you throw the ball in the air. The ball is still traveling at that speed because it was traveling at that speed before you threw it. And then it will land in your hand. Unless you accelerate. Unless you throw the ball in the air, you move quickly, and then the ball falls, and it's like, where the hell did you go? Um, so it's not A. A is true. Jumping off a moving subway car is an unintelligent thing to do. Okay, you should already know that this one is true because just read the first part of it. Jumping off a subway car is an unintelligent thing to do. Very good. Uh, due to the large amount of momentum you have in the direction of the subway. Yeah, again, so you're jumping off the car. You're still moving in the direction the, the car was moving. So you're going to fall uh, and you're be moving very quickly. You'll have a lot of momentum when you fall and that's going to hurt uh, a lot. C, the acceleration due to gravity on all objects on planet Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. That is true. If you don't know that, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Can I delete something on the thing? That's so cool. I feel like I have power. Your weight is an acceleration, not a force. Okay, I want, like, you should know that weight is a force. That's definitely something you should know. Uh, and it's caused by acceleration due to how much acceleration and mass you have. But weight is a force. It's Newton's. Weight is shown in Newton's in physics. So that, this thing right here, is not true. And you should definitely be in a position where you, if you read a sentence like that, your weight is an acceleration, not a force, you should, you should not like that sentence. Can you go me? Why is it 500? Where? Where is 500? Oh, right. Five, so if it's 500, if, if it's 50 kilograms, yeah, if it's 50 kilograms, 50 times 10 will get you Newton's, so 500 Newton's. Awesome. Um, so, so, okay, and the answer to 9 is C. And let's just go through the rest. Your weight is an... Ex oh, no, the answer to 9 is D. I'm sorry. Uh, and let's just go through E. The earth and moon each exert forces of equal magnitude upon, a, upon one another. Okay, that part's true. But a force of this size has a smaller effect on the earth due to its larger mass. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The earth and the moon exert the same amount of force on each other. Why? Because Newton's third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If I punch someone... Believe it or not, their face is going to hit my hand. Like, it will hurt my hand just as much as my hand hurt their face. Which is why punching hurts a hell of a lot. Alright, uh, I should know. I've been in a lot of fist fights. Clearly. As you can see, I'm quite a nerd. So that means I've been in a lot of fist fights. Okay. Um, a 200 kilogram car traveling east at 15 meters per second collides with a 200 kilogram car traveling uh, 7.5 meters per second west in a perfectly uh, inelastic collision. Inelastic? Uh-oh, where did I go? Here, here we are. Awesome, thank God. All right, I thought that I would never find where we were again. All right, uh, in a perfect inelastic collision, how fast are the cars moving after the collision? Okay, there are a few things you need to know to answer this question. One, the conservation of momentum. That means that the total momentum of a system uh, before something happens, before two things collide, before two things explode, before I sneeze, the total momentum of a system is equal to the total momentum of that system prime. In other words, after whatever happened. After two things collided, after two things, two things exploded, after I sneezed. That's what prime means. That means after whatever happened. So the total momentum of the system 
is equal to the total momentum of the system after these two car cars collided. That's one thing you should know. Inelastic collision means here, imagine we've got two cars. And, the, and this one's moving here, like that. And this is actually exactly the question we have. And this one's moving like that. They're going to collide, right? Boom. They're going to they're gonna collide into each other. And after they collide, an inelastic collision means... That, imagine these two cars are sticky. Uh, so they're going to stick to each other. I think. Yeah, yeah. It means they're going to stick to each other. So after they collide, they're going to stick to each other. And they'll become one car that, that's sort of stuck to each other. They'll become one entity. So... Let's figure out how much momentum is in the system, in the total system, before the collision. Well, we've got a 200 kilogram car uh, traveling at 15 meters per second. So the total momentum of that car is 15 times 200, which is 30, uh, 30, zero, zero. So it's three, yeah, three, zero, zero, zero. Uh, kilograms, meters per second. Kilograms, meters per second that's car one uh, car one momentum so that's the total momentum of car one so the total momentum of the system will be the total momentum of car one plus the total momentum of car two car two momentum all right because that's everything in this imaginal in, in this universe that we are imagining right now so the, the second car is collides with a 200 kilogram car traveling 7.5. So 200 times 7.5, uh, which is, uh, I, you know, what? I, I, if I thought for a second, I could figure it out, but I don't want to think for a second. So 200 times 7.5 is 1,500 uh, plus 1,500. And that makes sense, of course. Uh, who do, do, Okay, so what is that? So that's so plus three thousand, so four thousand five hundred. Okay, so the total momentum. So after we've done all that, we now know that here I'm gonna go back a little bit. So we now know that m, the total momentum of the system before the collision, uh, is four thousand four thousand five hundred, right? So the total momentum after the collision, m prime, is going to be, um, so since they're stuck together, again, since the cars are now stuck together, we can calculate them as one entity. In other words, they'll have the same velocity and they'll have the same mass. So uh, their new mass is 400 kilograms, right? Because the two of them combined, because one of them was 200 and the other one was 200. So the total mass is 400 kilograms, right? 400 kilograms. And we don't know what the velocity is. But we do know that 4,500 equals the total momentum of the system, which will be velocity, that we don't know, times 400, right? T text me, uh, show in the chat if you don't understand why that's true. Everyone understand that that's true? I pray to God everyone understands that that's true. Because otherwise, it's going to be a lot harder for me. Three, two, one. Okay, everyone understand that, uh, understands that that's true. Awesome. So we divide both. So now we just do algebra. Divide both sides by 400. Divide by 400. Uh, cancel out the zeros. Zeros cancel out. So it'll be 450. Wait, what's the formula for this? The formula for this is m equals m prime. In other words, uh, in other words, the it's basically just the total momentum of the system before the collision equals the total momentum of the system after the collision, and the total the mo and the total momentum of the system before the collision equals the momentum of the first car plus the momentum of the second car. So that's 3,000 plus 1,500. That's the total momentum before the collision, and we know that that equals m prime. And since they're stuck together, they're one entity, which have a mass of 400 and a velocity that we don't know. But we know that 4,500, uh, we know that 4,500, 4, is that, wait, what? Yeah, I don't know why I keep on adding extra zeros. We know that 4,500 equals velocity times 4, 400. 4,500 equals velocity times 400, right? Because velocity times 400 will be the total momentum of the system after the collision. Do you understand? 
if you don't re rewind the tape, watch it again, and then st skip back to the to where we are now and tell me they understand. Because I'm not going to continue until you tell me that you understand. Okay. Wow. While that's happening. And if you don't understand, just tell me you don't understand. Got it. Okay, good. Awesome. Let's move on. Onward and ever upward. Okay. Uh, right, so now we divide both sides by 400. So it'll be 45 divided by 4. Uh, actually, I could just do divided by 400 equals. So the answer is 11.5 meters per second. Velocity V equals 11 point point two five meters per second and is that one of the answers it is not but the closest so that's actually oh wait 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 no no i made a huge mistake i made a huge mistake i made a huge mistake all right, crap. Um, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Don't say. Okay. Here's the thing. We've got so the the total momentum before the collision m equals the mass of the first car m one times v one plus m two times v2, right? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, Max. You're going to have to, like, rip out that whole page. I made I made a huge mistake. Uh, actually, you, if you just add negatives in certain places, you might be able to salvage it. So don't rip it out. Just maybe erase certain pla places. Let's just figure this out. So the mass of the first car is still 200. And the velocity of the first car is still 15. It's still 15. So 200 times 15 plus the mass of the second car is still 200, but the velocity of the second car is not is not 7.5, it's negative 7.5 because everything is relative. So negative 7.5. So in reality, the total momentum of the system is 3,000 minus 1,500. 3,000, right? Because that's the total momentum of the first car, minus 1,500. Okay? Okay. So, 3,000 minus 1,500. Everyone understand? Equals 1,500. Okay, very good. So, M equals 1,000. 500 and that and that in turn uh oh no 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 closer in. thank you and that in turn so since again the ball the two cards are, are are combining um so they're the their total the total mass is 400 how do you get 3000 oh 200 times uh, 15 200 kilograms is the mass of the first car times 15 uh which is the velocity of the first car and that's 3000 all right, so anyway, the total mass is 400, and the velocity is a question mark, right? But we know that 1,500 1, must equal 400 times the new velocity of the two cars combined, right? 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 Right, right, right? Okay, so now we divide both sides by 400. So 1,500 divided by... 400 equals 3.75 meters per second. 3.75 meters per second equals the velocity. Okay? Now, now we have to figure out the direction. Is it east or west? Well, we know it's positive. And we also know that when we were talking about the first car, we talked about its velocity as 15 positive 15 and we know that the first car was going uh east so if the if the final velocity is three point uh oh what, what happened 
If the final velocity is 3.75, then it, positive, then it must also be going east. So the answer is B. Everyone understand? I'm not going to move forward until everyone understands because this was a bit of a tricky one. And the next two, I think, are very similar. So if you don't understand this one, then you're not going to get the next one. So please tell me if you understand. Can we take Mincha break? Uh, Max, if you're serious, we can. If you're not, then let's go forward. Max, tell me if you're serious or not. Yeah, I got a Dobbin. Okay. Um, the problem is if I end the stream now and then I continue it, then it's going to be two separate videos. It won't all be the same stream. And I don't want to do that. Um, so if you want to Dobbin like super quick and then come back, we can do that. I could Dobbin like in five minutes. Legit. Uh, so we could like seriously just do that five minutes later the thing will continue for those of you watching the stream like again skip forward five minutes uh, to uh, around five minutes if we're still not continuing skip forward again um, and then I should continue doing this okay so we're gonna take a five minute break uh, we'll be back in five minutes Max and I need to go down and everyone else who's Jewish on the stream maybe this is a good opportunity for you to dive in too and we'll reconvene in five minutes okay I'm gonna go dive in uh, Max, I don't think that we're able to have a minion over chat, so let's just let's just go. I'll uh, be back in five minutes. And Max, uh, Max, write in the chat when you're back, okay? Okay, I'm back. Uh, we're we're waiting on Max to get back too. Who's still here, by the way? Like while we're waiting, just everyone who's still here, right in the chat. I guess I don't know. Whatever. If you want to. Uh. <laughs>
you're back. All right, let's go. Let's continue. All right. All right, everyone understands how we got everything. Remember, the velocity in the end was 3.75 meters per second, which is B. That's the answer. Okay. Uh, I'm definitely not going to be able to control Z this stuff. Yeah. All right. Let's just do a new thing. Do you want to just sit? No, I do not want to save. Okay. Yeah, we're back. Okay, let's do this. Um, next question. Okay. A one kilogram car traveling east at eight meters per second collides with a one kilogram car traveling west at eight meters per second. In a perfect elastic collision. In other words, they're not going to stick together. They're going to bounce off. That's what an elastic collision means. As a result of the collision, the first car turns around and starts moving west at eight meters per second. What happens to the second car? Okay. So again, uh, we've got the total mass of the system before the collision equals the total mass of the system after the collision. I mean, momentum of the system after the collision. So the total momentum of the system before the collision is one times eight, because one kilogram times eight meters per second, so that's eight, uh, plus one times negative eight, which is actually eight minus eight minus eight. Okay? So the total mass of the system before collision is eight is zero, and that has to equal the total mass, uh, the total momentum of the collision, at, uh, the total momentum of the system after the collision. Uh, total mass of the system after the collision. Um, so how are we going to figure that out? Well, now we've got there's still two cars, um, and they're uh, and they're moving in separate directions. So one of them has a mass of one, and the other one also has a mass of one. So we've got one times, now as a result, as a result, the first car, which is this one, turns around and starts moving west at eight meters per second. So it, it has a new velocity of negative eight, because it's going west, negative eight. And we don't know what the new velocity of this guy is, so let's put an x over here. So it'll be one times negative eight plus one times x and you should be able to figure out what this is going to be so if so if so let's simplify this a little bit uh this means this means that zero equals negative eight plus x so if we add eight to both sides we get eight equals x and the answer is it has a new velocity of 8 meters per second. In what direction? East. Right? Because positive is east and negative is west. Right? Here's my compass. North, uh, east. No. Nope. Yeah, north, east, south, and west. So west is negative, east is positive. And the answer is 8 meters per second east. So the answer is it travels east at 8 meters per second, A. Everyone understand? If you don't understand, please write in the chat. I know that these questions of momentum and also energy could be very confusing. So if you don't understand, please tell me and I'll try and go over it again. Okay. All right. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. We're moving forward. Awesome. A one kilogram car traveling, oh wait, no, we, we just did that. Okay, a five kilogram car that's initially at rest explodes into two cars. Okay, okay, that, okay, that, okay. So we've got a five kilogram car. That explodes and becomes two cars, two smaller cars. So, because of this explosion, like imagine you've got a train and it explodes. Figures are going to be flying in other directions, right? So there's going to, we're going to be putting velocity into the, into the system, right? We're going to be putting in momentum. The explosion puts in momentum. Uh, in order to figure out certain things, we, we, we need to be given the information of how much mass these two things have. So after the collision, one of those cars is observed to have a mass of two kilograms and is traveling to the right at six meters per second. Okay, so... This one over here has two kilograms and is moving to the right at six meters per second. Now, if this one has a mass of two kilograms, that means this one must have a mass of three, right? Right. Okay. So now again, what's fascinating here is that 
still the equation momentum in the beginning has to equal momentum prime, has to equal the momentum at the end. So in the momentum at the beginning, it's not moving. So it's 5 times 0, which is 0. So it's 0 equals, how fast is this one moving? Well, we don't know. So 3x plus 2 times 6 is 12. Okay? All right? So minus 12 on both sides. 12, uh, negative 12 equals 3x. And the speed that this car is moving... Uh, divide by 3, divide by 3 is negative 4. x equals negative 4. And we know now that it's moving negative 4 meters per second west. Or, or, well, since we're doing right and left now, or to the left. So 4 meters per second to the left is the same as negative 4 meters per second. So it's b. Everyone understand how we got that? Five, four, three, two, one. Moving on. Please tell me I can do control Z. No, we were so close. File, new, don't save. Can't believe I have to do that every time. All right. What provides a centripetal force for a roller coaster car cart traveling really fast around a loop? at the moment that it is upside down on the top of the track. Okay, so, so so imagine this is the loop of the roller coaster track, and it's saying that it's upside down at the top. There's our roller coaster. It's got its wheels connected to the track. Awesome. Um, and it's moving in a circle. Okay, so it has a horizontal velocity. And the thing about centripetal force is that it's always, it's always in the direction of the center of the circle, which is here. So it's pushing it to this direction, right? So what two forces are pushing it in this direction? Okay, well let's let's look at some of the let's look at some of the options. Gravity alone. Well, gravity is pushing it, so I would be tempted to just put an A. But let's read some more. Normal force alone. Uh, well, guess what? Normal force of the track, since normal force of the track is also pushing it down. So gravity and normal and normal force so far. Tension and gravity. Tension of what? There is no tension. There's no string here, so there's no tension here. So it's definitely not that. Gravity and normal. So we know that gravity is happening. We know that normal is happening. So it might be D. Gravity and tension. Again, there's no, there's no string. So there's no tension. Electrical alone. There's no electricity. Magnetic. Whoever told you that there's magnetic uh, stuff happening here. So the answer is D. Everyone got that? Everyone understand how we got that? Should I start doing stuff in color coded now? Like I could, I could make, I could make this the force of gravity no it's still black okay yeah i'm not gonna do colored stuff i think that i uh, i had in mind when i started the stream that i was like gonna do different forces and velocities would be in different colors but that did not happen so i guess we're not doing that all right how many more of these do we have oh my god it's crazy oh stop stop stop, stop. what are we up to all right. Consider a, cri uh, a a carrot. Does that say carrot? It's not how you spell carrot. Carrot. Expert. Ka oh, karate. Here we go. Consider a karate expert during a talent show. She, she, all experts in karate are males. She, uh, that's definitely not true. 20, tw uh, 2020, guys, 2020. I don't know why I said that. Okay, she executed, nah, forget it. She executes a swift blow to a cement block and breaks it with her bare hand. Wow, she's she's strong. Okay. During the collision between her hand and the block, the... the Alright, so this is going to be a process of, elimina uh, of elimination. Uh, the time of impact on the block is greater than it is on the expert's hand. That makes no sense. That means that, that means the amount of time the, hand, the, the block is touching the hand is greater than the amount of time the hand is touching the block. That makes no sense. Force on both the block and the expert's hand have the same magnitude in the same direction. Okay, this would be true because, again, every force has an equal reaction, but an 
equal and opposite reaction. So it's not in the same direction. It's in it's in an opposite direction. So impulse on both. So not so it's not this one. Impulse on both the block and the expert's hand have the same magnitude in different directions. That's not true. The different directions part is true, but the impulse part is not. I think. Um, impulse equals force times time. So the time is the same. Right, the time is the same, but the force is not the same. That's the thing. So the, the impulse on the hand is a negative number, while the impulse on the block is a positive number. So it's not the same impulse. So the answer is definitely not this one. The answer is none of the above. Everyone understand why that's true? If not, we'll break down each and every one of them, and I'll explain to you why none of them are true. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Everyone understands it. Let's move on. Wait. Why? Okay, so now we have to break it down. All right, so why what? Which one are you confused about? Do you think that A might be true? Do you think that B might be true? Or do you think that C might be true? Or do you think that they're all true? In which case, wow, we got something to talk about. All. Okay, here we go. So let's draw a diagram. Here we have the block. And here we have the karate kid. Okay, so I'll break it down each of them. So she's punching the block. Awesome. Great. Imagine so it the, the first one says the time of impact on the block, the time the amount of time that that, that her hand is touching the block is greater than the amount of time the block is touching the hand. That makes no sense, right? Tell me I'm right. Uh, if you don't, if you, if you still don't get it, I'll try and explain it further. But it simply just doesn't make sense. Please tell me if you got a problem with it. Right. Okay. Awesome. Moving on. The force on the block and the expert's hand have the same magnitude. That's true. Why? Because every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, meaning that the, 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 the amount of force is the same. But it's not in the same direction. Because the hand, the hand is pushing the block. In, oh, ooh, color coded time. Okay. The hand is pushing the block in this direction. Okay, the hand is in green. And the block, so let's make the block in, in blue. And the block is pushing the hand in this direction, right? Okay, so they're not in the same direction. They're in different directions. So the second part of B is not true. And that's why it's not true. Do you understand? Write in the chat, please. Oh, everyone, by the way, please like the video. Please like the stream. That would help me out a lot. Make my ego feel all nice and fluffy. Got it. Okay, super cool. Uh, by the way, slide the 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 thing like you know the what is it called the scroll bar of like the time place to the to the end because it seems like you have a little bit of lag even though the stream is updating very quickly. So slide it to the end to make sure that you're you're with us and in, in where we are. I'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Uh, shoot, why did I do that? Okay, wait. Let's draw this again. Color code it again. Block. Person. And from now on, we're going to be doing color-coded stuff to make things easier to see. Oh, and by the way, it's a girl, so we're going to give her some hair. Okay, now she looks like, uh, well, actually, if I give her, like, a skirt. Yeah, okay, fine. New, it's a girl. All right, um, impulse on both the block and the expert's hand had the same magnitude in different directions. Okay. So this question is sort of a combination of this one and this one. Why? Because impulse, where's my black? I equals uh, force F times time, uh, which we'll show in red. Times time. Okay. 
So the amount of time they're both touching each other is the same. So the, so the time, let's say, is two seconds, okay? So actually, let's say the time is one second because that way we don't have to worry about it because force times one is the same. So let's say the time is one second. So P equals one sec. Come in. Give me a second, guys. Come in, come in. Hey. I got him. All right. Um, and the force, okay, so the force that she, again, the force that she's putting on the block is in this direction. And the force the block is putting on her is in this direction. So the thing is right, it, it is in different directions, have the same magnitude. Wait a minute. Oh my God, Goatman, you, you caught it. Wow. Uh, the answer is C because it's the same magnitude, it's the same number, but in different directions. In other words, one of them's negative and the other one's positive. So the force that, so imagine, so the force that she's putting on it, imagine it's 10. Oh, wait. Imagine it's 10 newtons. And the force that she's putting on it would also be 10 newtons. But it would, but this one be, would be negative 10 newtons. Wow, look at that. You, you caught it. Well done. Well done. Very nice. I'm very proud of you. I feel like I taught you that at some point. All right, super cool. Should I stick with the color-coded stuff? Does that make it easier to, to visualize, or should I go back to everything being in black? Uh, moving on. No one liked the video. Guys, you got to like the video. All right. Um, all right, moving on. Question 15. A race car is black. Oh, okay, so Max wants to go back. All right, so I'm going to go back to black. All right, a race car is currently traveling comfortably in a uniform circular motion around a flat racetrack. Awesome. So we've got our race car. It's going around the thing. Here's our car. And it's going around the thing in a uniform circular motion. Ah, whatever. Okay, so I guess it's not showing up on, on my tablet that people liked it, but whatever. No, it doesn't matter. Um... Cool, so it's going around. Uh, at, a, at the maximum possible speed, it can go without spinning to the side of the circle. Okay, so think about this. If it's going too fast, it won't be able to maintain this circle. It will like skid and it will make a bigger circle uh, because it won't be able to maintain this tight, tight circle that it's going. So it's going at the fastest it could go to maintain the circle. What frictional for force would need, to, would, need to be to, would need to be attainable between the car's wheels and the track in order to allow the car to travel in a circle with a third of the radius at three times the initial speed. Okay. So imagine here, imagine it's a one kilogram car and the maximum speed it could be going around this circle is one meter per second. I'm using one just to make everything a lot easier. One meter per second. And the radius of the circle is one. Ah, uh, shoot, why am I making that? The radius of the circle, again, I should just do it like this so that it's not confusing. The radius of the circle is one meter. Okay? Now, something to keep in mind is Fc equals mass, Fc equals mass times velocity squared over radius. Now, Right now, it's 1 times 1 squared, which is 1, over 1. So it's just 1. So in the beginning, is 1. Now, in this case, the thing that allows a car to move in a circle is friction. F, the, the, the centripetal force, Fc, over here, this is friction. So the force of friction over here equals 1. It's 1 newton. One newton. Okay? All right, cool. So this is all given to us. Now, the question is, if we... If we... Um, to track uh, in order to allow the car to travel in a circle with a third of the radius. So, if, if, in other words, if we make the radius... If all of us... Okay, here, let's zoom out. If we all of a sudden now decide to make the radius 
one third um and we what's happening why why what cool okay why why are these two not syncing up there we go okay cool awesome great that's that's, that's i thought that's what it was before okay uh well okay uh so we're making the radius one third and 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 the velocity is going to be three times the speed. So the velocity is now going to be three. So again, the car is still one kilogram. One kilogram. And the velocity is three meters per second. Because it's going at three times the velocity in the, uh, that it was originally. So one third the radius. So one third of one is one third. And three times the original velocity, which is three times one, which is three. All right, cool. So... Now all we really need to do is plug this into the, to this same equation. Fc equals mass times velocity squared over r. So uh, mass is still 1. So we really don't have to worry about the mass. So it's just velocity squared 9 over 1 third. So 9 over 1 third, which is the same. Okay, so we could, we could really plug that into our calculator. Uh, 9 over parentheses. 1 divided by 3. So let's go to our calculator. Uh, 1 divided by 3 is 0.3. 3. So let's do 0.33. And so 9 divided by 0.33 is 27.2. 7. So 27.3. 27.3. And this is our new FC. In other words, this is our new friction. Does this make sense? So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's 27.3, which is around 27. So the options are three times the value of the current frictional force. That's not true. Nine times the value of the current frictional force. That's also not true. Was that a notification on your computer? Because I suddenly looked around mine to see if I had one. I think it was on mine. I don't remember what it was. I, I, I actually blocked it out. 12 times the value. That's not true. 27. And the answer we got was 27.3. So the closest thing is 27. And that is the answer. Does that make sense? Uh, the, way I've, the way I showed that? Or should I do that again and try to explain it differently? Uh, if it doesn't, please write in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. In 5, 4... Three, two, one. Okay, everyone got it. That's super cool. Ah, great. Everyone got it. Moving on. New. No, don't save. Super cool. And okay, very good. Okay. Um, a certain strong rope uh, just breaks when it's under 640 newtons of tension. So we've got a rope. And it's being stretched, and if you stretch it like with a force of 640 newtons, it will snap. A daring 11H physics student uses. Okay, let's let's change this to 11A because we're in 11A, and I don't like 11H. Uh, a, a daring 11A uh, a physics student. Uh, student uses this rope to whirl a 10 kilogram stone in a horizontal circle in a horizontal circle of radius one meter. The student continuously increases the speed of the stone. At approximately what speed will the rope break? Assume the tension of the force is directly is uh, is directed totally horizontal. Okay, so. So the FC in this case is tension. The reason why we've got a ball that's able to move around in a circle that's tied to a string is because of the string's tension. If the string's tension was not there, it would fly off in a random direction. So the reason why it's able to go in this circle is because of the tension of the string. So in other words, the FC is the tension. So at what point will the string break? In other words, at what point will the tension be 640 newtons? So 640 uh, equals max F C, right? What is the max F C? Well, the max F C 
uh, max, the, the max frictional thing is going to be equal to uh, how, how, so the, ma uh, so remember the normal equation for FC equals mass times velocity squared over radius. And the, and the mass of this rock that it's, that he's fl uh, twirling in a circle is 10 kilograms. So max FC is 10. Uh, times a certain velocity. We don't know how quickly that how what that velocity is. So we'll put an x over here, x squared over the radius. Because again, he starts it with a with a velocity of right. Yeah, we don't know what uh, how quickly he's twirling it, but he continually increases the speed. So we don't know how, at what point the speed will be too much. At what point the speed will make the max FC. So we're gonna put an x squared over the radius. What is the radius? The radius is 1 meter. So 10 times x squared over 1. Uh, over, yeah, over 1. So the first thing we'll do is we'll multiply both sides by 1 to, uh, to get rid of the 1 down here. So multiply both sides by 1, uh, which will leave you with the same thing. MFC, the maximum FC, equals 10 times x squared. Now, in order to do this, we need to know the number for this. Well, over here, the maximum FC is 640. So, let's go to the side. 640 newtons equals 10 times x squared. Divide by 10 on both sides. Divide by 10. Cancel out the zeros. 64 equals x squared and x the speed at which it will be going when the string breaks is the square root of 64 i don't know what that is uh could i do square roots here could i do squares here ah here we go uh 64 yeah wait 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 here square root of uh 64 is that's weird square root of 64 yeah no okay i should be able to figure this out just with my head um can someone tell me in the chat uh while i try to think of it is it eight i think it's eight yeah i got it i uh, got uh, daniel i saw it before you wrote it in the chat it's eight um, so that, th there we go. That's the answer. The velocity when the string breaks will be eight. And is that one of the, uh, possible answers? Yes, it is. The answer is A, B, C, D. The answer is D, eight meters per second. Awesome. There's no way I'm going to be able to control Z all of this. So I'm just going to do file new. Don't save. Cool. Um, next question. By the way, everyone understands why that's good. GR eight. Oh, great job. Ah, you're so funny. That's so punny because it was eight. Oh my God, you're hilarious. All right. Two 11A students, one of a mass 6D kilograms. Wow, he's fat. Okay. And the other a mass of 500 kilograms sit on opposite ends of a seesaw, each two meters away from the center. Okay, so let's draw the seesaw. So we've got that. All right. Um, okay. Uh, so two meters and two meters and this one is 60 kilograms so here let's put a weight over here to demonstrate our student 60 kilograms and this guy is also uh, 60 kilograms ah i'm sorry no he's not he's 50 kilograms he's a little bit skinnier and by skinnier i mean he's normal size while the other guy is nice and fat uh, no offense to all you guys out there that are 60 kilograms. <laughs> Though I doubt you would know because who the hell measures themselves in kilograms. Okay. What is the net torque of on the seesaw? Okay. Torque is how much the seesaw wants to bend, in, like turn in a certain direction. And the equation for torque is T equals I times uh, 
I times alpha, I believe, rotational acceleration. No, wait, maybe. Hold on, let me let me look at my notes. I believe t equals i times rotational acceleration, but I don't know what rotational acceleration is right now, so that that's the only thing that's throwing me off. Uh, here, torque. T equals i times yeah times alpha, which is angular acceleration. Okay, that's that's strange because I because now we so okay great so now we so that's what t will equal. That is what the net torque will equal. Actually, it's the sum. Wait, no, 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 that's not true. We'll get to that in a second. That's what T will equal. Um, what is alpha acceleration? Uh, or angular acceleration is delta angular velocity over T. So weird. How am I supposed to figure this out? I don't know what. All right, we'll, we'll get to this one in a second. Um, How am I supposed to figure out what angular acceleration in this case is? Wait, wait, there's another equation for torque. Hold on. There's another equation for torque that might be better. Where is it? Where is it? I believe it's force times distance squared. All right, all right, let's figure this out step by step. So first thing we need to do is figure out what I is. Well, there's an equation for that, like there is for almost everything. I equals the sum of all the masses times uh, radiuses times distances squared, okay? I is the rotational inertia. I is how much line does not want to change. Like how, how much line does not want to start spinning. But what does the sum of all the masses times rotational uh, times radiuses squared? Well, that means that here's one mass times a radius and here's another mass times a radius. So it will be 60 times 2 squared, uh, 60 times 2 squared, plus 50 times 2 squared, okay? Um, it's the sum of all the masses times radius is squared. It's, it's mass times radius squared plus, plus mass times radius squared plus mass times radius squared. All right, so it's uh, 2 times 2, uh, two, 2 squared is 4. So 60 times 4, uh, 60 times 4 is 240. And 50 times 4, 50 times 4 is 200, plus 200. So four, uh, 240 plus 200 is 440. Now, here's the issue, but we'll be able to figure it out some way. Here's the issue. The issue is now we know what I is, but we don't know what alpha acceleration is, right? Right. But we know that it's Ah, uh, no, because ugh, this is so frustrating. How am I supposed to figure out what alpha acceleration is? How am I supposed to figure that out? This must be one that he taught, like, the honors class. Mass my, uh, Newton, Newton's times...
Oh wait, we we I messed something up. Um, real quick, this is not. Wait, is that two? Hold on. Yeah, no, it is two. I don't know how to figure this out. No, he taught this to 11A because it says 211A students. Is anyone here in the chat that uh, that can figure this out? Uh, specifically figure out how we're supposed to get angular acceleration? Wait, wait, wait. Here's a test that I have. There might be a question in it. This might be the test with, with a question similar to this. Uh, seesaw, seesaw, seesaw. Seesaw. Hmm. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. No, no. Uh, torque equals I times alpha acceleration. There is another kind of torque. There is another kind of torque. There is another equation for torque. Not, not another kind. There is another equation. I believe it's force times distance squared. But... But I'm not sure, and I don't want to say that unless I can find that in my notes to prove it. Give me a second. If that's the equation, that if that if that is the equation, then I believe that we could figure this out using that equation and not this one. By the way, this is the hardest thing in physics: learning like to figure out which equations you use when. All right, I'm gonna go on Wikipedia and find the right uh, find the right equation. All equations for torque. There's one guy that asked all equations for physics. That is not a smart idea. Can I just like have a list, please? Torque is force times radius times sine theta. Uh-uh. No, we're not using that. Uh... I need Wikipedia. Wikipedia always has these things written in such nice ways. Um, here we go. Torque. T equals radius times force. Okay, I think we, where T is the torque, R is the position, and this is the force? Wait, this is easy if this is the equation then this is easy force times radius that's it really there's no way it's got to be force times radius squared t is radius times force t is radius times force t is radius times force all right very good actually that's super easy okay new thing file new don't save again we've got our seesaw um 60 Two, two meters, meters. Torque equals force times radius. Now, in this case, the issue is is that there are two, there are two forces, which are shown in the kilograms, which we'll figure out in a second, and there are two radiuses. Okay. So let's let's so it will really be a combination. In other words, the sum of all this. That's not that's not sum. This is sum. The sum of all the forces times radius. So this force. So the force we're talking about now is gravity. How much it's pushing down on the seesaw, which means sixty times the acceleration of gravity, which is six hundred newtons. So six hundred times its radius, which is two. plus 500 times its radius, which is not 2, it's actually negative 2. And I might be getting something completely wrong here, but if I am, we'll figure it out in a second. So 500 times negative 2. So that is 
twelve hundred plus ten. Uh not ten plus not nah, minus it'll be minus minus a thousand minus a thousand right twelve hundred minus a thousand is two hundred and that is one of the answers two hundred newton meters the answer is b all right that took way longer than it should have i'm so sorry for that uh everyone understand how we got that if not please run in the chat and i'll go over it again uh cleaner simpler right uh please tell me in the chat if you don't understand i'm, mo I'm moving on in five four three two one awesome we're moving on oh oh no shoot that was a big accident google help me um Okay, first of all, I knew, I, I accidentally exited out of Google, which was a big mistake. Let me just go back to the stream so that I can access stuff. Live. And it's going to tell me that I'm currently live. Yes, yes, I want this one. Take me to this one. Great, okay. Uh, moving on. So, right, yeah, I need, I need to go back to, I'm sorry, I, I exited out, I lost the questions, and now I need to find it again. And black pod. Change model, log in. Yeah, I'm logged in. Okay. Uh, classes, physics, uh, assignments, midterm. Uh, other part of last year's midterm that's being downloaded. Great, cool. Select it, drag it, split the screen with it. Um, this needs to go away. Uh, select this, drag it, split the screen with it. Awesome. Cool. And we need to go all the way down to question, I believe it was, yeah, 18. And now, File, new, don't save. Cool. Aaron Judge, wait, hold on. If that's that's how you want to play it, then I can do that. Okay, you're still gonna move to the side. Fine. Okay. Wow. This is a this is a war right here. Okay. Um, Aaron Judge, while standing in a in a huge vacuum, hits a long hard line drive. Double that. Wait. Line hard drive double. That leaves his bat with an exit velocity of 40 meters per second. All right. So. Imagine this is the baseball, and it is f flying through the air, right, at 40 meters per second, okay? Flying through the air, right? Um, and this one I am going to color code, by the way, because it's going to make life a lot easier for everyone. Okay. Uh, at a launch angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Okay, so let's make our horizontal plane. So this 40 meters per second is a combination between two uh, vectors, a horizontal vector and a vertical vector. The vertical vector is telling it to go up, and the horizontal vector is telling it to go to the side, which leaves us with this diagonal thing that we see here in black. And it is going here, uh, 30... It's going at an angle of 30 degrees, right, above the horizontal. Assuming the ball lands at the same height from which it launched, okay, what was its flight time? Okay, here's the thing. Um, what we need is an equation that relates um, distance, no, not distance, All right, I'm gonna tell you, okay, I'm gonna have to explain this in a non-traditional physics way in order to help you understand. And by the way, I did not need to color code it, um, so that's awkward. Okay, here we go, mites. That's our thing. Okay, so imagine here's our ball, okay? And here's the ground, right? And it is flying through the air until it hits the ground again, right? Now, on the way up, it has a 
Oh, wait, no, so I do need this stuff. Okay, so what we need for this is we need to figure out exactly what is the vertical component of its velocity. Uh, let's let's zoom back in for a second. Okay, we need to figure out exactly what the vertical component of its, of its velocity is in order, to do th in order to do this. So how are we going to do that? Well, we know that uh, opposite, so opposite over hypotenuse, which is black, over hypotenuse, equals the sine of something, of an angle, of angle theta. Opposite over hypotenuse equals sine of theta. Is that, this is theta. Right? That's the thing. Opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Sokotoa, right? So we don't know what the opposite is, so let's write an x for that. Uh, wait. So here. So sine of 30, in our case, because this is the angle 30, sine of 30 equals 40 uh, no, actually opposite here, equals opposite, which we don't know, x over 40, right? Awesome. So if we times both sides by Four, uh, by 40, we'll just do algebra, so sine of 30 of 30 times 40 equals the vertical component of our velocity, equals x, right? So now I just need to do sine of 30 times 40. Should be easy enough, right? Um, so now I need my calculator. Calculator. But I need a better calculator. I need, I need a legit calculator. Um, standard scientific. Here we go. Scientific calculator. Cool. All right. Um, function. So here, yeah. No, I want sine. Is there a sign here anyway? Trigonometry. Yes. Yeah, sine of 30 times 40. is whoa there's no way that's true hold on hold on yeah yeah i don't know <sighs> stupid things so here the sign why is this not working sign yeah wait all right clear sign of 30 why is it saying 30 equals 30 I want the sine of 30 all right let's go on to a more legit calculator uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. Beautiful. Sine of 30. Sine of 30. Uh, times 40. Why is it a negative number? This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. The sine of 30. Why is that negative? Cosine of 30? That's positive. Sine of 30. Is this negative? Okay, we're going to ignore the negative for now. So, so here, that times 40. So it's, it's, it's about, it's, it's 39.5. Okay? So that, so x, so here, so that is... 39.5, which means back to our original example uh, of the ball. So on the way up, it's got a vertical velocity of 39.5.
right? Now, it's traveling in a perfect parabola. What does that mean? It means that at the end, it will be traveling in exactly the opposite direction it was at the beginning. In other words, it will be traveling down at negative uh, 39.5. And my nines look like fours. 39, right? That makes sense? Okay. In other words, we will be encountering... So here's the equation I made up. The amount of time it will take is equal to the hmm how should I do this um, is equal to two times the velocity times the vertical velocity wait why am I running in green the amount of time it will take is equal to two times the vertical velocity times V over acceleration over a now in our case the amount of time it takes and this is by the way an equation that I made up but I, I proved it worked it works equals 2 times 39.5 over 10 because it's accelerating due to gravity so why 10? Because gravity. Why 39.5? Because that is our velocity. Why 2? Because we're encountering it two times. Okay? What is this number? So let's figure this out. Um, so here. Clear. 2 times 39.5 divided by 10. So the total air time is 7.9 seconds. So T equals, uh, no, because that's not one of the options it's giving us. Okay. Yeah, this is a problem with the whole sine and cosine thing. Let, let's do this problem again, real quick. Let's do this again. File, new, don't save. All right. Um, Right, okay, so the ball is leaving the bat at an exit velocity of 40. And it's 30 degrees off the ground. Okay? 30 degrees above the horizontal. Assuming the ball lands on this. Okay, very good. So now we need to figure out what x is. And x, like we showed before, is equal to 40 times the sine of 30, of 30, right? Let's do that. No, I, did I exit out of Google again? Ugh. Okay, I'm getting super tired. We've been going for like so many hours. What time is it? Oh my God. Oh my God, we've been going for so long. It's already five o'clock. Wow, this stream is insane. This is going to be an insanely long video. What is happening? Back. Okay, create. Go live. Give, give me to my live place that I can monitor stuff. Thank you. Cool. All right, now we need the calculator. Calculator. Cool. All right, so 40 times the sine of 30. Oh my god, why is it a negative number? Oh, I want my graphing calculator back. I left it in school because I don't want to forget it tomorrow for the physics test. Uh, which I always do, so I left it in school, but I want it back now. Thirty-nine point five that times two. Seven is negative seven point nine, so it's around seven point nine seconds. So it should be eight seconds. Why is there no option for eight seconds? Don't understand. Why are the only options six seconds, five seconds? 
four seconds, three seconds, or two seconds. I must be doing something wrong with my calculations somewhere. Assuming the ball lands at the same, okay. Um, opposite over hypotenuse, x over 40 equals sine of 30. So sine of 30 times 40. Is this the second one that I'm sitting here for like two minutes trying to figure out what the answer is? So tired. Tired. Sine of 30 times 40 should be getting me the right thing. Why is it not? Hmm. So weird. Accelerating downwards at the rate of 10 meters per second squared. Let's stick with the 39.5 meters per second. So x equals, because that's what we figured out, 39.5. So if that's true, then one second later, oh, wait, hold on. If I do, there must be, it must be this, 39.5 times 2 divided by 9.8, uh, no, wait, divided by 9.8. Nope, nope, that's even less correct. Okay. Oh, <sighs> crazy. Aaron Judge hits drive line forty meters per second. 30 degrees above the horizontal. All right, let me go back to the original, to the real equation. The real equation, my equation is two times the velocity over the acceleration equals time, equals the amount of time that's in the air. The real equation is negative velocity minus the velocity over negative 10 because acceleration is negative. So negative 39.5 minus 39.5 divided by negative 10. Negative 39.5 minus 39.5 divided by negative 10 is still effing 7.9 which is not one of the options. Is there an answer key? There is no answer key. Okay. That's convenient. Where are we? All right. All right, I'm going to I'm going to okay, so that didn't work. Um Let's think about it this way. It's starting up it's going 39.5. After one second, it's going 29.5 because gravity is accelerating it. The next second, so it's, so far it's been two seconds. Next second, it's going 10 to 19.5 because uh, gravity is still accelerating it. So it's been three seconds so far. So three seconds, it's going uh, uh, equals 10. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, 19. Point five. Okay. Um, four seconds, it will be nine point five. Five seconds, it will be nine point five minus ten is point five negative point five. So five seconds. Five seconds. 
equals uh, negative 0.5. And we're going to continue going until we get to negative 39.5, because that's what it's going to be. Um, so here, let, let's, let's get rid of all this, because now we could start from a little bit farther on. Hold on, x equals 39.5. All right, so five seconds, five sec will be uh, point five, negative 0.5. Negative point five. Six seconds will be negative. Wait. Uh, sorry, five seconds is negative one point five. Right? Wait. Okay, now I'm now I'm confusing myself. Did I exit out of Google a freaking again? Okay, this is crazy. Create the live. I'm sorry that this is so insane, but I don't know why I keep on getting the wrong answer. Calculator. Okay. Um, yeah. 9.5 minus 10. Is, yeah, point, okay, so 5 seconds is... 5 seconds is 0.5. Um, 6 seconds... is 10.5. Seven seconds is, I'm sorry, negative, that is negative 20.5. Eight seconds equals negative 30. All right, so we've already passed six seconds, which is the highest amount of time it is, is available, and it's still not working. So every single way of figuring this out that I know is just not working, which is very frustrating. And they're all getting me the same answer too, which means that I'm, which means that I'm not doing anything wrong. It means that the question just doesn't make sense. Aaron Judge, standing in a huge vacuum, hits a long, hardline drive double that leaves his bat with an exit velocity of 40 meters per second and a launch angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. The vertical Okay. Okay, see you, buddy. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, maybe next time. Uh, I think that something's wrong with this question. I don't think that this question makes sense. Okay. Um, The only problem I could think of is one with the calculator. And by that, I mean, when I'm doing the whole sine of 30 times 40, sine of 30 uh, times 40, that this is where it could be going wrong. Um, to get me the vertical component of the velocity. But like, I don't know what else to do. I'm just putting in sine of 30 times 40. Also, I don't know why it's a negative number. That's that's the real thing that's making things weird. What if I, here, I have an idea. Cosine of 30, uh, cosine of 30 times 40. This is going to get me my horizontal. So the horizontal is 6.1. 6.1. Okay. So now with that information, tangent, the tangent of an angle tangent of 30 should equal opposite x over 6.1. So tangent of 30 times 6.1 should equal x. So here, tangent of 30. It's another negative number. Times 
39.1. Boom, 39, not 0.5, but that's because I rounded. It's still 39, it's still negative 39. If I do this number times two, which is my equation divided by 10, I still get 7.9 or 7.8145, whatever. So it's, it's still broken, even though I went on a roundabout way to do it. Uh, so every single mode I have of making sure that what I'm doing is correct is checking out. Everything I'm doing is correct. It's not giving me the right numbers though. Uh, for some very strange reason. Aaron Judge while standing in a huge vacuum hits a long hard line drive that leaves his bat with an exit velocity of 40 meters per second. Exit velocity is 40 meters per second. Launch angle of 30 degrees. Okay. I'm sorry that we spent so long on this, but with your guys' permission, I'd like to move on or end the stream right now because I'm super tired. But there's something wrong with this question. That's the only thing I could think of. There's literally, that's literally, that's the only thing I could think of. There's something wrong with this question. Uh, so, so honestly, I'd like to end the stream now because I'm exhausted. Um, but I'll continue if, if uh, all three, all, both of you guys want to continue. There are only two guys left, uh, which I assume are Ezra and Goldman. So guys, if both of you want me to continue, I'll continue. But I want to stop because the last problem really not happy about it. Not happy that I spent so much time for nothing. Um, and, uh, and yeah, yeah. So should we just end it now or should we continue to the next problem? Uh, there are many, 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 many more problems. And there's no way I'm going to do all of them tonight. I'm, I'm exhausted. And we've done a lot. We've done very well. Um, I think that that should. If you guys want to do like one or two more, I'll do that. But other than that, I'm not really going to do anything else. So right now, no one's writing in the chat, which I am which I assume means that everyone's gone. Which means I'm just going to stop doing stuff right now. So unless someone writes in the chat in like 10 seconds, I'm going to stop. Because I'm exhausted. And I'm getting cranky, as you can clearly see. All right, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, guys, it has been a pleasure. Um, this was honestly a lot of fun, even though I think it ended on a bad note. By the way, you want to see something cool? Here, this is the streaming software I have that's streaming. It's called OBS. Look at look at that. That's so weird. Like look at how there's a delay and it's like it's moving in this weird way. It's so cool. So cool. And you could also see it over here. Which is also super cool. Um anyway, the super super trippy, right? So cool. I love it. Alright, anyway guys, it has been a pleasure. Um till next time. I still forgot my outro. I still don't remember what my outro is, but I think it's not like remember to always be yourself and something, something, something. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Yes, please end the stream. See ya.